Hello. Okay, so um, thank you for coming. Um, uh, I, this talk is about how to design your board so that it is manufacturable, so that the companies that you will find in Shenzhen, in the Futian district, li uh, according to the advice in Bunny Huang's A Guide to Sh Shenzhen, will actually be manufacturable. Um, there is. Yeah. So um, I apologise if you can't hear. Um, I will think, but I do need. To, I will need to go back to the laptop to show you what's on the screen. So we we'll just have to bear with me on this, okay? All right. So your nightmare scenario is one which actually happens. This is a real world scenario that regularly happens with the factory that I know in Shenzhen. Mike. Um, tells me that he receives PCBs with a bill of materials from companies in the United States and the United and the rest of Europe, which have been exclusively designed using AVNet, RS Online, Farnell, and DigiKey, and they expect him automatically to be able to beat the pricing for the components by a factor of four to five to ten. Okay? All right? It turns out, though, that the parts that, the people, that people ordered were last manufactured in China ten years ago for a project which was some very large thing. There were a million made ten years ago. DigiKey was the main buyer of those parts because they were very commonly available. They ordered 100,000 to keep stock to supply the repair centers, etc. You, you get the idea. Then that product went end of life. And to make space in the factory in China, the company destroyed the tooling. You know what's going to happen and going to come next, okay? So basically, that part is no longer manufactured. And the only place in the world from which that part may be obtained is the warehouse in DigiKey somewhere in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> so in order to fulfill the order that Mike has done, he has to go back to that has been received, he has to go back to the factory, the, the owner, and say, I'm very sorry, the only place I can fulfill your order with is to order these parts, oh, which were from China, shipped to the US, get them imported back into China with a six to eight week delay and customs duty of 30 to 40 percent. On top of the, uh, the fact that the parts were made in China for one dollar, by the time they got to China they were two dollars for the shipping cost, plus import duty, plus warehouse storage fees, plus things, so it's, that one dollar was now ten dollars for a one dollar component. It's now got to come back into China with a 30% import jet. Now it's $13 yeah, for a $1 part. You do not want to do this, OK? All right? So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to give you some advice on how to source the components and check that they are available. OK? All right? So your two friends, can you hear me over there? Yeah. Brilliant. Your two friends are AliExpress.com and Taobao.com. All right? Do not buy from these people. <laughs> unless you are in China and you are a, or you are a Chinese citizen. Okay? If you really, really want to buy from Ali, uh, Taobao.com, you should go to EngTaobao.com. All right? This guy is a Chinese national. By law, if he is ripped off by a Chinese citizen, he is entitled to take them to court. You are not. Okay? So you pay 5% extra, but you can, give that, that you can give the guy some money to beat them over the head to get your money back. Okay? All right? They don't, they don't, they don't listen to foreigners, but you, I am assuming that you are all aware that there are fake suppliers that on, on, um, on these sites um, who sell uh, to even to Chinese national citizens, they will sell um, 
The famous one was the people put concrete in milk powder cartons. Okay, so um, it happens, you know, you get 100 microfarad capacitors, in, uh, 10 microfarad capacitors in a 100 microfarad case. And three and a half inch IDE drives turn out to have a two inch IDE, um, and three and a half inch SATA drives turn out to be a two and a half inch IDE drive with a, a SATA, uh, IDE to SATA converter in it. Okay, so I'm a, I'm, that is out of scope for this talk, okay? All right, just bear that in mind. So, um, Eng Tau Bao is your, is your friend if you are abroad and you actually want to buy the components. Okay, bear in mind it's the equ Chinese equivalent of eBay. You get what you buy. Um, so, uh, you're not actually buying, but what you are doing is you are checking the availability of the part. Okay? Your most important thing is when you want to find whatever it is, you first go to DigiKey or whatever. Okay, now I search here, some people paying attention will have noticed, I search for the SN75 LVDS83B, which is a Texas instrument part, which also was cloned under the name NT71 in China. Um, uh, um, they're, they're identical, all right? Um, <clears throat> surprise! And on here, you get the... Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> As you said, and they're all the original masks. <clears throat> so on DigiKey, you get access to the data sheet. On the Chinese equivalent of eBay, don't even think about asking them for the data sheet, okay? All right? But you don't even want to buy the part. You're just checking the quantities of suppliers that have it available. If you've ever been to Fujian District, one of the places, the, the ground floor is football pitch sized and it is five stories high. Okay? There are 5,000 suppliers of parts in the one building. Okay? So um, uh, you want to check quantity rather than quality. And so having done your search on here for SN75 LVS and got the data sheet and designed everything, before you commit to that, you go to the Taobao website and search for exactly the same part and you check, if I can get this over, how many pages of stuff there are. Look, there's loads of suppliers, they're all different, they're not identical photographs, okay? It's, you can tell all the names of the people selling are different. You can get a rough idea of the price from the, from the thing. You discard the low ones, discard the high ones, are roughly in the middle or somewhere, but if you want absolute guarantees of pricing quotes, you, you go to, you use your Hachua Chang Road, um, your factory in Shenzhen, okay? All right. And this is very important, this bit, is that there are five pages and more of this same part, so you know that there are massive numbers of suppliers, and you can pretty, it's not totally guaranteed, you can pretty much guarantee that this part will be available when you go to the Shenzhen markets, okay? That's, this is the bit of information that is missing from Bunny's extremely, otherwise very, very good book, okay? Bunny has assumed that you know how to order these parts and which ones to get, yeah? Okay? And he helps you to find the ones and distinguish between the parts that are prime quality and the ones that are second-hand, recycled, etc., etc., and the dodgy guys, all right? So, um, uh, uh, so, so but, but it's, this information of what I'm giving you here is completely missing. So, um, step one, uh, look on DigiKey, find the data sheet, check that it, is for, it suits your needs. Step two, before you design the PCB and the schematic with the part, Check the availability using either AliExpress or Taobao to check the quantity of suppliers and the diversity of suppliers. Okay? And if it's not available, don't use it. I'm mean, really serious. Do not use that part. Find an equivalent circuit that uses an alternative part. Okay? The other more popular one, um, there is, it's very common, for example, for people to use um, a a Texas Instruments or uh, a, 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 a USA-designed um, uh, current limiter chip for, um, um, for USB power. Okay? In certain circumstances, you can't use the power of the USB hub. You have to do the, power check, the current limiting yourself. 
Now, in some cases, like the Scilogy Sci-6280, you will not find the data sheet online. And the only way to find out about this chip is to find some, somebody else's schematic which has this in. So there is, it's a bit of hit and miss. Some stuff you will find on DigiKey or Final, blah, 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 et cetera, really easily. Some of it you will just have to find somebody who knows, who has specialists in this area and knows their parts, OK? All right. So copies of this data sheet are, are now being distributed over, over a thing. Um, thank you very much for marking that as it's time. There is one last um, uh, thing which is very, very important. LCDs. If you are sourcing LCDs, use this website, panellook.com. It overwhelmed all of the other websites that were, were uh, for, for court sourcing. You don't buy from there. You put the information about in the brand, blah, blah, blah resolution, etc. Make sure that you put the um, available, uh, that it is available rather than discontinued, and just search for it. And you're looking for quantities, multiple suppliers, again, of 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 from multiple suppliers. That's basically it. Thank you very much. Okay, a couple of quick questions for Luke. Yeah, go. Question somebody? Yes, gentleman here. Why do I not directly from the website? Why do I not buy from AliExpress or Taobao only? Um, the, the reason is because um, those suppliers, they're eBay. They may not supply to directly. They may rip me off. So I have a trusted factory owner whom I have a good relationship with. I have met him. I know he exists, and um, he even takes credit. He even gives credit. I'm, I'm not going to give you his name because he, 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 I don't want the people to take advantage of him. But if you really need an introduction and you're serious, I can walk you through the process. Can't find my email address um, on the, uh, Yuma 68 or uh, Rhombus Tech or LKCL.net. Um, you can find me and contact me, and I will walk you through the process and introduce you to him. Okay? Okay. Thanks. Good. One last question. Somebody? Yes. Um, I think the, in case you're only needing a few single components, uh, then it's a totally different story. Also, Absolutely. the price for well, buying or not from AliExpress. Right, very good. Uh, very good point. Uh, the gentleman here said, um, if you're buying only like ten or twenty components um, uh, rather than a thousand, then it's uh, okay to use AliExpress. Um, I would strongly recommend that you try and end end Taobao because they buy it and they check. Uh, they don't check it, but they buy it and make sure it goes on. Um, it's a risk. It's hidden risk, risk. If you can find somebody who is prepared to buy a thing, it is a pain in the neck. I cannot even get quantity 20 samples within a few days because um, uh, it's not worth their time or money to, um, to, do, to do it. So what Mike does for me is he has a, uh, a big order of 50,000 and he says, oh, and incidentally, could you look for this 20 for me? Okay? Then he knows that he's doing them a favor by getting them lots of money. So it's very, very different. You have to, you have to think, and that's why Bunny suggests going over there personally. For this, solving this problem of, I just want 20 components, you really need somebody to go round the markets personally who has the time, or do it personally yourself. And that's where Bunny's book takes over from this talk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.